All right, it is GAP day. And for those who might be new to the channel and aren't familiar with GAPs, GAP stands for Genuinely Approachable Pencil Puzzle. And so the idea of these is they're supposed to be basically entry level. If you've never done one of these puzzles before, th these should be doable. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna be simple and you can do it in two minutes, okay? So if you've never done one of these before, don't be surprised if it takes you a little while, but it should be doable and you should be able to understand the logic and find uh, the next steps in theory. So that's the idea. Um, a lot of these pencil, a lot of these puzzle types I have not done before, so I'm learning them as well. And if you do get stuck, feel free to, um, you know, try the puzzles yourself. And if you get stuck, come back to the video and just kind of watch until maybe you see my first couple steps that I do. And then if that helps you, then you can work some more. And then if you get stuck, you can come back and wait until I get past that point. And that's that's perfectly acceptable. Um, so hopefully you try these puzzles. There will be links in the description for all of them. And uh, I've also I also put timestamps in the description. So there's the chapters, so you can skip ahead to just the rules or just the solve for each of the individual ones. And yeah, so let's get to the first puzzle. All right, so here's our first puzzle. It is a chocolate banana by Freddie Hand. Now this is a puzzle type that I have never done before, never heard of it. I mean, I've heard of the food, chocolate and banana, but never the puzzle type. So the rules say shade some cells so that all areas of orthogonally connected shaded cells are rectangular and all areas of orthogonally connected unshaded cells are not rectangular. So orthogonal just means um, connected across a border, like left to right, up and down, something like that, but not diagonally connected. Um, so I guess if we look at the example right over here, you can see that there's shaded rectangle. So this one's a rectangle, and of course a square is a rectangle, right? A rectangle is not a square necessarily, but a square is always a rectangle. Um, and the unshaded areas have to not be rectangles. Okay, so like the one in the top right here, of the green, is the unshaded. It's sort of a backwards L shape, okay. Makes sense. Uh, a clue represents the number of cells in its group of shaded or unshaded cells. Okay, so the clues can be shaded or unshaded, right? Oh, and it looks like, right, so the example is good here because we can see that the two fives are in the same region. So you can have more than one clue in the same region, apparently. Um, obviously, they would have to be the same number. You couldn't put uh, a four and a five in the same region because one of them would be saying it's size four and one would be saying it's size five and it can't be both sizes, so. Um, Okay, I think I understand the rules. So, um, link in the description, uh, as usual. If you wanna give this a try, I'm gonna try it now. Here we go, reset the timer. So, so one thing I can see is the fives are gonna have to be unshaded, because you can't make a rectangle, oh, but you can, you can. I was gonna say you can't make a rectangular region of size five, but you could do something like this, like a one by five would work. Okay, but for sure the ones have to be shaded and they have to be surrounded by unshaded cells because uh, the one, whether it's shaded or unshaded, it has to just be the single cell, which is for sure going to be a rectangle because it's a square. And the twos have to be shaded as well because two cells connected are always gonna form a rectangle. And so we can unshade these because the two is either gonna be there or there. Those are the only options, same down here. Now this five, can't be shaded because it would just be a single shaded cell. So it has to go that way. And now we have five cells there. So these all have to be shaded. Um, okay, if this shaded connects up here, now it's not gonna be a rectangle. So that has to go there. This one could come up, but then you'd have a rectangle of unshaded there. So this has to come up and over. Excuse me. If this four is unshaded, it's gonna be size five. So you have to do that. And now that's the only way to make that uh, a rectangle, and so we have to unshade around it. Now, if this is unshaded, you're gonna have six unshaded. So this one has to be shaded. That's nice. Um, it has to have five, but it has to be a rectangle. So we can't come down here. In fact, it has to be has to be that. It has to be a one by five, and you can't stick down or it would have this little branching piece here. So we can do all of those. That forces the two there. If this comes down this way, it's gonna make an L, which is not a rectangle. Same here. Now this one could stick down one more. Uh, this has to continue, because we have to make this not a rectangle somehow. This eight, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. this could be, actually it has to be unshaded. If it's shaded, it's a single cell, so it has to be unshaded, and that is therefore eight. So these all have to be shaded. 
This is a rectangle and we can't add any more or it will become not a rectangle. That has to stick down. This needs, this could just be by itself or it could come down here, one or two, still be a rectangle. Uh, if this is unshaded, this region is gonna be bigger than four, so that's shaded. Um, and now to make it a, a rectangle, we can't have a one by four, so it's gonna have to be a two by two square. So we can unshade all around there. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's eight, so we can do all those. The five, that's five, so this has to be shaded. There we go. If this extends, you're gonna end up with a non-rectangle, so we do that. This has to be a rectangle, all of those. And then this needs to not be a rectangle, so it needs to connect there, there we go. Congratulations, hooray, all right, cool. That was interesting. Um, so three minutes even, let's see, what was the, there's, there's time standards. Oh, and a sloth was three minutes even. Look at that, so I got the sloth. Now the sloth is the fastest time if you're under the sloth time. Um, that's the fastest, uh, and then crab is the next one, and then if you don't get under the crab time, then you get a bird. Uh, and the crab time on that one was seven minutes, and there's nothing wrong with getting birds, especially if these are new to you. Lots of people get birds who have done these puzzles before, so. Um, I sometimes get birds as well. Often I get crabs. But that was Chocolate Banana by Freddie Hand. That was fun, I'm gonna move on to the next one. All right, next up is a puzzle called Milk Tea by Eric Fox. Now, this one is another one I've never heard of. It seems like we're we're got a bit of a food theme going here, chocolate banana and now milk tea, and it is uh, around lunchtime, so this is just making me hungry. All right, so this puzzle, let's see, we're drawing lines between the centers of cells so that each connected figure forms a T shape. Let's pull up the example here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let me get the right, uh, we gotta get the milk tea example. There we go. The example puzzle here, okay, so each connected figure forms a T shape. Okay, so we can see, that's pretty easy to see, all those lines form T's, okay? A straight line with perpendicular length extending somewhere in the middle. Exactly, and it doesn't have to be, it, the line is extending in the middle, but clearly from the example, it doesn't have to be in the center, it could be, you know, over, but it can't make an L, is what I think is the point there. Exactly three circles must lie on each T shape, okay? One on each loose end. Okay, so there's there's a circle at, at each end or just on each end? One on each loose end. So it does look like from the example that they have to be at the ends of the T. Okay. On a T shape, the two circles connected by a straight line must be the same color and the third must not be that other color. Okay, so like this one on the bottom right here, we can see there's two black dots connected by the vertical one. And then there's a white dot connected by the the like the leg of the T essentially. The crossbar has two of the same color and then the leg. That's what I'm calling it, anyways. I don't know. T shapes may not overlap or share circles, and every circle has to be used. So there we go. Alright, I think that's pretty clear. I think I understand the rules. So link in the description. Give it a try. I'm gonna start it now. Reset the timer. Here we go. So I mean, clearly this white one has to be connected to there. I feel like you have to do that. And so then these are gonna have to be connected. And it could connect to that white or that white, I guess. Um, this one here. The only, so if this is, this one can't connect to a white except for this white. And if it doesn't connect to a white, it's gonna to have to be connected to a line that are two blacks, and it, it can't, there's nowhere for that to work, basically. So I think it's gotta go like this. And then this one, and this white, if it connects to this white, where's the black that's gonna be on the leg of it? So that's not gonna work. I think this has to be this way. That's what I'm thinking. And then these whites connect to that black, these blacks connect to that white. Um, and now I've got four blacks and two whites left, so they have to go that way. There we go, cool. That was interesting. I've never done a puzzle quite like that before. I'm not sure what, you know, a lot of times you do these puzzles and I can say, oh, this is similar to this other one or this is similar to that thing. Um, but I don't, I don't really know. I mean, Masayu, obviously it kind of looks like Masayu, but um, completely different logic, so it's only similar in, in the way it looks, so. 
Um, very neat. So 110, let's see, how does that do? Got another sloth. 120 was the sloth time on that one. All right. Cool. So sloth. All right. So that was milk tea. Moving on to the next one. All right. This next puzzle is a chained block by Shy. So we're going to shade some cells to form orthogonally connected blocks of shaded cells. Okay. So we can see over here, there's chains of shaded cells. Okay. Each belonging to exactly one clue, right? So there's the four in the top right, there's the three down here, the one over there, the three down here. There's not any chains of shaded cells with more than one clue in them. When blocks meet diagonally, they form chains where no two blocks of the chain have the same shape. Oh, okay, I see. So the four, the one, and the three are all connected as a chain. Um... So there's, there's a block of four, a block of one, and a block of three, and they're connected diagonally, so they form a chain. And then on the left side, there's the block of three, and then the block of three, and the block of two, and they can't have the same shape. So while that one in the top left has uh, two blocks that are size three, one of them is an L, and one of them is an I. So, and every block must be part of a chain. Okay, so you can't have, like... Uh, there's the one and the three down at the bottom, but those couldn't be disconnected because then they would have a block that wasn't part of a chain. Okay. I think I understand. Um, link in the description. Reset the timer. Give it a shot. All right, here we go. So, I mean, this this has to be a... a yeah, we have to do all of this. That's the first thing. We can do this. Now... The five, uh, I mean, it can't turn here. It's going to get stuck because it can't connect to the three. So it's got to do this and there and there. I think it has to do that. It's connected to the four. The four could bend and come up here, I believe. Um, we can do the, We can do all of this, all of that. That's a block. Or chain, I mean, sorry. We can do all of these the same way. If this turns, you can only do four up there. So it has to go this. Oh, but it has to. So it's a block of shaded cells. So does maybe this is allowed. Maybe we can do five like that. I think so. It doesn't necessarily have to, it doesn't say it has to be a one cell wide block. Just orthogonally, orthogonally connected blocks. So we don't actually know for sure it goes like that though, because it could go over here and then grab one of those. So we know it's these three though. And this one doesn't necessarily have to I, I erroneously put that up there. It could actually turn here and con connect diagonally to the three. But the three... Okay, this one has to connect to something. Ah, and this one can't be shaded because it would have no clue in it. So it has to connect there to the five. And in fact, the ones can't ever connect to each other. They can't be in part of the same chain, which is interesting. The one here connects to the four. And twos can't ever connect to each other either. Right. Twos can't ever connect to each other because they would be the same uh, shape. So this two can't connect to those twos. And this one can't connect to this two. Oh, I can't connect anyway. It can't reach there. This one can't, this, this can't be shaded. There's nothing that can reach to that cell. Neither can this one. Now this two could go up if the five connects like that. In fact, the twos, remember the twos can't be connected to each other. So we have to do this. The five has to connect there. And now this two can't connect to the five at all or the two up there. So it has to go this way. So it has to be one of these two. So that's unshaded. The three now, two, it has to have this one. It could get, oh yeah. In fact, it has to be like this. There we go. This is what we need to do. Uh, and so the five has to go there and then there. There we go. Okay, cool. 
That was tricky. That was very interesting. I wasn't sure um, from the example, because in the example puzzle, um, let's pull that up again. All of the the blocks in the example puzzle were one cell wide like snakes. And so it didn't say this in the rules, but my brain was like, oh, one cell wide. We have to do one cell wide. And it, it's the chain, the chain and the name, I guess. I don't know. Made me think that, but that's not true clearly. So um, that was a little tricky with the fives down here, but very cool. And then it took me a little while, probably longer than it should have to realize the twos can't ever touch each other because, because it's a two, it's just, it has to be a one by two. That's the only option for size two. And so they can never touch each other because they have to be the same shape. So interesting, very cool puzzle. Very good. Um, I enjoyed that one. Let's see, 318. I suspect that's not a sloth. Nope, still a crab though. I'm always happy with a crab on a puzzle type I've never seen before. So there you go, that was Chained Block. Moving on to the next one. All right, next up is Medjilink, continuing the trend of puzzles I've never heard of before. Um, so let's pull up the example here. We might need it. Uh, all right, so we're gonna trace some of the given borders to draw a non-intersecting loop. Okay, so this is kind of like Slitherlink. Um, the number of cells in a region must equal the number of borders surrounding it that don't belong to the loop. Okay, so we're gonna draw a loop. So just along the border, something like, oh, uh, oh, okay, it's not gonna let me do something, but oh, we have to draw along these borders, I see, okay. I understand now. We can't draw in the empty spaces. So, um, okay, and it has to be non-intersecting, so we can't do something like this. This would not be allowed. Can't branch off. The number of cells in a region must equal the number of borders surrounding it that don't belong to the loop. Okay, so we're definitely gonna have to look at the example here. Okay, the number of cells in a region must equal the number of borders surrounding it. I see. Okay, so we have our regions. Um, so like this is a T-shaped region up here. And then we have this, uh, those, there's a square one here, right? And this big U, the fat U down here. Those are the regions. And so the number of cells in a region, um, so let's look at the example. In the top right, we have a two cell region. It's just a one by two. And so the number of borders surrounding it that don't belong to the loop, so look at the X's. Those are ones that aren't part of the loop. There's two X's on that two cell region. Then this single cell region down here has one X. The sort of sideways um, U that kind of goes like that on the top left has five cells in it and has five X's because the X's are the ones that aren't used in the loop. Oh wow, this one is, uh, I can already tell this one's gonna be a little bit of a brain bender. Okay, interesting, very interesting. All right, I'm gonna reset the timer, link in the description. Here we go, okay, so I guess the first thing I can see, these squares, they're one cell, they have to have only one X that's not used, right? So if it's this one, you have to use all three of those and now the, like, the loop ends in this corner, so that doesn't work. Same thing with this one, so we have to do both of those. And we have to, so these two are essentially like uh, like a three clue in um, uh, Slitherlink. And so we have to do all of that. You can try things, but that's the only way that's gonna work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This needs to have seven X's. We've got one, two, we've got one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We've only got seven um, cells left, and this one has to be, so one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, so it ha the rest of these have to all be, um, X's. Now this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we've got six X's, so we can only leave four blank, so one, two, three, four, this has five, so if we leave any of these blank, we have to leave all of them blank, so this have to not be blank, essentially. And now we need to have four. One, two, three, one, one, two, three. So this one has to be blank, and then one of these two sets of three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got to use that one and not the rest of these. It's the only way to get to eight. And now this can't be. 
because you can't branch. And so we have to use those three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yep, so if we come up and around, that leaves four X's up there, perfect. This is gonna have to go this way. This needs to have four X's, which it does, come here, and then we have to go there. Yep, perfect, cool. All right, so that wasn't quite as brain bending as I thought it was gonna be, but I imagine this puzzle type, if you get some harder ones, it could really mess with your brain, trying to, yeah. I don't know, it feels like that's, that's this type of puzzle. Interesting. But that one was perfect for an entry level version. That was very well done. Jovial, thank you for that one. All right, 154. Let's see, okay, that's a crab. Yep, 120 was the sloth time. Um, I feel like if I had done a little less counting and a little more just um, doing it off intuition, I maybe, I don't know, 120 is a lot, that's 34 seconds faster. Maybe, if I just sort of guessed. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. All right, our next puzzle type is a Nori Nori. This one's by Turganis, and this is a puzzle type that I have done before a few times. So we're shading one by two dominoes. So you'll notice in the example here, all of the shaded cells are one by twos. Um, so that every region contains exactly two shaded cells. So again, if you look at this one in the bottom right, the, the dominoes overlap the borders, but there's still two shaded cells in that region, same up here. But then like the one at the top, um, we have two regions at the top there and both of them have the domino inside the region. So you could have both cells in a region or it could overlap, but then you'd have to have two separates. So shaded dominoes may not touch orthogonally. So you can see all of them, um, some of them touch diagonally, they don't have to touch diagonally. Dominoes may exist in multiple regions, but are not required to. Yep, so they can cross the borders, but don't have to. And there's no, um, some puzzle types, you have to have all the unconnected cells um, touching and that's not the case here. This is just one by twos and don't let them touch orthogonally. That's the rules. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try now. Link in the description, reset the timer. Okay, so, uh, oh, these both have to be shaded, which then means, um, so a one by two region has to go this way. You don't have any options, so. And now that's the only thing left for this region. Uh, Okay, down here, if we do these, it rules out both of those and you can't do two cells in that L. And the same if you do this way, it rules out both of those. So this one could only be in if it was with that one. If this one's not in, then these are both in. Either way, that one is in. And so it has to be those two or those two, which rules out that one, forces that, gives us this. Now these two are the only two left in that region. These two are the only two left in this region. This one can't connect to anything. Uh, this one can't connect to anything. So that leaves these two. This one has to either stick up or to the left so we can rule out that. This has to come up that way. Uh, there's only two left in this region. This one has to go up or to the left. This one has to go up. So we can do all of that, force is this. This is the only one left in that region. There's only two in this region, it rules out all of those. This one's ruled out. Uh, this one, it could go like that. Oh, we've already got one in that region. Okay, yeah, yeah, so. This one's out. Oh, we've got one in this region as well. So we need to have, this one needs to overlap somewhere and this one needs to overlap somewhere. This one, you could do, can we do that? Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So 149, I don't think that's going to be fast enough. Nope, probably not. Not fast enough for a sloth. I probably should have had a sloth on this, on a Nori Nori, just because I've done a few Nori Noris before, but that's okay. I was, I was close. 125 was the sloth time, so I'm happy with that. All right, so that was Nori Nori. I'm going to do, uh, I think, one more. All right, our final puzzle today is a Philomeno. Now we've done Philomeno before. This one is by Freddie Hand. I've got our example up there again, the same one that we looked at before. It might even have been possibly even the last gap video I think we did Philomeno. I feel like we just did it. But um, so we're dividing the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells. Regions of the same size cannot share an edge. So you'll notice there's uh, an L shape four that kind of goes down and to the right. And then on the left side, there's an I shaped four and those don't touch and the two two cell regions don't touch um, orthogonally. They can't share an edge, they can touch diagonally. Um, clued cells must belong to a region containing the indicated number of cells. So 
the twos are in a two cell, the four are in a four cell, and you can have, you can notice the one over there in the third row, you can have a region that's not clued. There's no one uh, up above there in the, the, the puzzle, but there is a one cell region in the answer. So there you go. That is the rules. I feel like we've done quite a bit of Philomeno actually on the channel in various um, forms. Uh, I even had a Philomeno on both of my advent calendars the last two years. There's been a Philomeno in there. So um, that is the rules. I'm going to reset the timer, see how this goes. Okay, so we have our one cell regions. Uh, the twos can't touch, so we can do that. That forces these twos up like that. So this has to be a three cell region up here. Uh, the four, um, I'm going to put, there you go. I'm going to do the gray border thing. Okay. So these can't come in here, so that has to be a one. Threes have to come up, therefore they can't, these threes can't touch, so the three does that. This three is forced that way. The one, the one, the four has to come up, can't touch, oh, can't touch here. So this four comes out this way. It could go up there, but it, it has to come down at least one here. This three comes out, and these threes have to avoid each other, so we get this. That forces the four up there, makes that a one. This has to be a two, three, oop. These threes have to not touch. We get that, that, that. This three is forced down, this three is forced down, this three comes out. Uh, in here we can't do a one, we can't do a two, we can't do a three, so this is gonna have to be the four. Um, And then, what do we want to do? The twos, so this is a one, this is a one. The three is done, that's a one. In here, we this can't be, this could be a one, but then what is this gonna be? This can't be a two. Could be a four though, we could have a one and a four actually. Uh, oh, this four has to fill up that space, which gives us that. Of course, is this up and over, there we go, that's good. Um, if this comes down, you could do a two. Otherwise, what's going to go in here? These can't, oh, yeah, these, these can't have ones down here. They can't have threes. So we have to do a two and bring the three down. That's the only way that works. This three comes over. And now we need to do a one and a two. The three is here. So we have four here. We can't do twos, we can't do threes, it's got to be a four cell region, yep, there we go, okay, cool, 221, I felt slow on that, um, oh, but it was still a sloth, okay, I felt slow, but maybe that's just because I've done quite a few philomenos before, so I felt like I should be going faster on a gap philomeno, but um, yeah, still got the sloth, so there you go, that was our last gap for today. Let me know in the comments how you did with these gaps. Um, did you struggle with them? Did you get them quickly? Did you get crab sloths? Um, did you not understand the rules of any of them? Just curious to see how you guys do with them. And um, I'll see you again soon with some more puzzles. Thanks, bye.